Well, hello, friends. I'm Dave Shirley. Welcome to the podcast. This is Dave and Tammy in the morning. Hello. Hello, Tammy. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You know, I want just to take the opportunity, you know, to welcome all of our listeners here today. You know, if you're new on the podcast, you know, I'm Dave and this is Tammy. Tammy, and we are Dave and Tammy in the morning. You know, today we're going to talk about several different things. Let's start off, you know, what do you think about this Australian wedding cake rock? Have you ever heard of that? I've never heard of it. Well, it's a place in Australia, and it's actually a big rock on kind of a cliff. And they say, according to you know what I've read, you know from different sources, that the government there in Australia has warned visitors to stay away from this fragile place called the Wedding Cake Rock. Uh, it's at a place known as the Royal National Park in Sydney, Australia, and at, they've gone so far as to set up this safety fence, you know, around this rock to kind of keep people away from the face because it's just kind of chipping off into the uh, into the ocean there. And, I mean, it's just a, it's a fabulous place. If you've never, you know, take the time sometime maybe to Google the Wedding Cake Rock in Australia. And, I mean, this was a big tourist attraction and climbers and everything else, would, you know, would go out to this place. Uh, and it's one of those things that, that uh, I mean, it's kind of unfortunate that it happens. I'm surprised you've not heard of it, Tammy. No, not heard of it. It's just a place called the Wedding Cake Rock. You know, and uh, I mean, there's all sorts of different places. Uh, I was just reading the other day, you know, a place that I had played golf uh, just not too long ago. There's, there's this giant sinkhole had developed there on one of the holes of the golf course. I mean, it was just huge. You know, probably a hundred yard, square yard area that just sunk in this golf course. Did you see it? Uh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I didn't see it while I was there, but I've seen pictures of it, okay. you know, and it wasn't too long ago that I was there playing, you know. But, uh, I mean, it's just sort of weird that, that these things can just happen out of the blue, you know, and uh, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of strange. Have you ever experienced anything like that, Tammy, where something just out of the blue happens and you're like, wow, I can't believe that. <laughs> I was just there. Um, I mean, accidents. You think, accidents. I mean, you were telling me a story here a while back about you know, an accident where you was on me, if you'd have just been a little bit earlier, you'd have been right in the middle of right, that right. accident. And that right. happens all the time to people, and it's sort of sort of crazy. And uh, I don't know, you know, what else can you say about, uh, is it a freak of nature? Is it just timing? Uh, you know, what is it? Divine intervention. Divine intervention, perhaps, that, that keeps you out of trouble sometimes. You know, let's look at something that's inspirational, though, here. As we get started on with this podcast, you know, of, of, the, of the morning show um, with Dave and Tammy in the morning. You know, we find comfort. Uh, uh, Frank A. Clark wrote this. It's a, kind of a quote by him. It says, we find comfort among those who agree with us. We find comfort among those who agree with us. But we find growth among those who don't. Right. Okay, what does that mean? We find comfort among those who agree with us, but we find growth, real personal growth, among those who don't. Well, you find comfort in those that agree with you because you don't have to defend or argue any points, issues, topics or what, of discussion because you both agree on the same you, thing. You both agree on the same thing. But, but it's kind of when we, we have to look outside of ourselves... I mean, when someone comes up and says, well, you know, I don't agree with that, or I don't agree with your position on that, and you and you first off, you think, well, why not? Who are you to not agree with me? <laughs> you, I mean, shouldn't everybody agree with me and agree with my point of view? Right. But then it, it turns around that, that they, they don't. Right. You know, and these are still friends, and they're good people, but they just don't agree with your view. And how do you, how do you overcome that? How do you grow as a person to... to Maybe not fully embrace that view. Well, you have to probably do a little research on the the topic and what the what the issue is to right. see all points of it. And, and right, and, and and look at it maybe from several different points. Maybe they have a valid point. Right. Okay, or maybe they just they have a view of it that fits them, but maybe it doesn't fit you. Right. Okay, and and that's okay. But you can learn to, I think you can learn to grow through that, right? Well, because you would learn different aspects, different point of views, different sides to two story, to one to, to story. To one story. You know, uh, that, that, that's, that's really interesting because not too long ago, uh, I was on a, a trip down to, to uh, San Antonio, Texas. And I'm sure you remember that trip. But, 
Right. I was on that trip and on that on the way back uh, from on the flight, there was a lady that was flying next to me, seated next to me, and she was really nervous. It was one of the the few times that she said she'd ever flew. And uh, when she got on the airplane, and I mean, I could tell that she was nervous, and I started trying to talk to her a little bit. And she quickly, as soon as the they come by with the, the drink service, she got herself a a couple of uh, alcoholic beverages. Okay, loosen her, her up a little bit. And she drank those, and she calmed right down. And she is actually she talked the whole flight, <laughs> almost nonstop. But but she was talking, and, and she was really concerned about an issue with her family. She had a a teenage son that was about 14 years old and uh he he had started um or he got caught by his parents her and her husband uh smoking marijuana okay okay and uh she was she was asking you know what you know as another man you know and a father and everything she said what what do you think about that what do you think we should do how should we handle this situation with our son you know who's got caught smoking marijuana you know and he was a skateboarder and he's into skateboarding and and perhaps maybe into some the wrong crowd a little bit, you know, not a bad, not a good influence on him. What do you think about that, Tammy? What 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 are some of the things that that face our youth today? You know, boys or girls, peer pressure. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, if if your if your son come home and said or come home, he wouldn't come home and say. I mean, I'd hope he would. Dad, I come home. All right, I smoked a joint today. You know, wouldn't that be nice if your kids were that open that they'd just come home and tell you uh, what what happened? But if you found out your son had smoked, uh, you know, some marijuana, you know, with some of his homies, well, how would you relate to that? I don't know. I would be disappointed, but I would try to calmly calmly address the situation. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're we're in a society now that's that. I mean, it used to be. No, I mean, even 30 years ago, 40 years ago, it was the belief that if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. Right. Okay, meaning we, we spanked, I mean, people spanked their kids. Uh, they didn't beat them. I mean, right. I'm sure some kids got beat, but for the majority, you know, it wasn't a corporal punishment thing. You got, you know, dad took his belt off and he whooped you with it. Right. And, uh, I mean, you remember that. And now we're into the age of of non-physical or non-contact punishment if there is any and and even that you know is is being scrutinized you know how dare you ground him or how dare you be mean to him or maybe that's or, what's wrong with some of our society today. it might be what's wrong with some of our society but what well, how do you how do you handle the situation you know a 14 year old that that get caught doing something really what what's your recourse you can ground him to some degree right okay but you can't monitor him all the time you can't monitor him while he's at school right uh you can't take away everything from him right right i mean you still gotta let him eat and sleep okay <laughs> and go to school so i mean there is some limits there and it is a real issue coming to terms with these these uh problems that face our youth face you know and even some of our younger adults face uh with peer pressure, you know, being pushed into doing different things or thinking that, um, you know, if you don't do this, you won't be accepted or even, you know, that, hey, it's just the cool thing to do. And and when it comes to find out, you know, these things can lead to some lifelong legacy problems absolutely, uh, and labels and, and even some sort of felony offenses. That's why we as adults... That, should set a good example well we should set a not, good example not to pressure our own opinions. and uh but but a lot of the, i mean besides the parents setting the good example i th i mean i kind of think that that at 14 years old your peer group or his peer group other 14 year olds 13 14 15 16 year olds or really have the power to influence him the most oh yeah absolutely. okay i or mean there's at 14 there's only so much a parent can do and if you try to correct, 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 they just a lot of times rebel against that, mm -hmm. okay? Because you're kind of an authority figure, right? okay? But if you can somehow steer them or direct them into a positive peer environment, uh, that if they meet people they like, that's their own age, that are, are good influence to them, sometimes their judgment and their course of action and their course in their life can be drastically changed mm -hmm. 
by the the peers that they hang around. Right. You know, it, it, it follows not only with with families and money, but but that that a lot of times you you're the people that you hang out with are are that's how you're going to be. Mm-hmm. Meaning their influence. If they're prosperous in life, chances are you'll be prosperous. If they're broke and they have a broke mentality, chances are you'll be broke. Okay, because you will develop the characteristics of those as a whole that you hang around the most. True. Okay, so if you want to change, you know, who you are personally, if you want to change your circumstances in life, if you want to change your personality, if you want to change how people look at you, if you want to change your prosperity, you have to learn and you have to focus and you have to to direct yourself to hang around the people that have the things that you want already. Okay. And 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 that prosperity, that mindset, that focus, that direction in life is going to gravitate toward you and carry you along that path. Okay. It's the same with the negative, it's the same with the positive. If you focus on the negative, the negative will drag you down the negative path of life. If you focus on the positive, though, and you focus on the things that you want, and you have the vision and the mindset and all that stuff, will it will follow you if you start that journey down that path that you want. And you can do that through the path of your peers. Find that peer group. You find that group of people that, that already have what you want out of life. Okay. And, and if you gravitate toward them and with them, uh, it'll carry you along that path. So that's kind of the advice, you know, for the family member, for that young man, for his mother, is to try to redirect him and refocus him um, through his friends. And if he doesn't have that positive peer group friends, is try to, to set him up into a situation to where he can have that. Mm-hmm. Okay, and hopefully he will adopt that. Probably easier than he's going to adopt your advice. I mean, right. Okay. <laughs> So uh, you know that's that's kind of it on, on the on the family saga, you know, of the of the trip. But it's a really good trip, and and I had a really good conversation with that. Well, you know, what's up? What's up with money? You know, do you do you know anything? What do you know about money? It goes as quick as you get it. It goes as quickly as you get it, and it sure can. You know, a lot of people say that um, you know that life is not about all about money right okay that that there's other things in life that are important mm-hmm. and i agree with that yeah but but I, I just want for the sake of the argument what in life is not has that doesn't have anything to do with money name a few things that don't have anything to do with money in them Da, 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 yeah, da. you almost can't do it because oh. even just sitting in your living room watching TV, it involves money because you have to pay that cable bill. You have to pay that cable bill. So if you eat, it costs money. Right. If you drive a car, it costs money. how does it cost money to drive a car? Payments, tires, fuel, maintenance, fuel, insurance. insurance. Okay, if you want to eat, you have to go buy groceries. You got to go buy food. Right. Unless you want to go there naked, you have to buy clothes. Right. Okay. Uh, unless you want people to say, ooh, they stink, then you have to take a bath. Right. If you take a bath, you need soap, a shampoo, water. water. Okay, you need a towel to dry off with. I guess you could air dry. Okay. <laughs> uh, but your hair is going to need fixed. Right. If you're a lady, you probably need your nails fixed, yeah. painted, yeah. toenails, pedicures, oh, manicures. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. How about your legs? Are they just going to grow like the Amazon forest? Uh-huh. Groomed. Keep them groomed. So you need going to do razors and shaving cream. Are you just going to after you shave your legs? Or are you just going to let them itch? You need to put some lotion. You got to put some lotion on there. So we need some lotion. So we can see that it's, it, you know life's more than money, but almost everything in life takes money. Right. Okay. So it's not the love of money, but you just need it. It's an evil, necessary evil. I mean, is is it evil? Is money evil? It can be. It can be, but it if, can it be used positively. Well, it can be too. Yeah. It can. So, so when we look at money, then we have to look at our mindset surrounding money. Okay. Right. Is it one of negative? Right. Depends. Or is it? So we go right back to the family issue and see how all of this ties in. Is how does money affect you personally? Is it affect you in a negative way? Do you have negative thoughts about money? 
or do you have positive thoughts about money? And, and I think this can be narrowed down a little bit is if you look at money as a tool versus something else. Meaning, let's take all the emotion surrounding money out of it mm-hmm. and look at it as a broom. Right. Okay. <laughs> or a vacuum cleaner. Okay. Okay. Or soap okay. or water or a towel. It's just another tool that you need to accomplish a purpose in your life. Right. Okay. So if you need groceries, then it's it, it's a tool to buy groceries. If you need a car payment made, it's a tool to pay the car payment. Right. Okay. So so we can take money and and kind of restructure our our uh, mindset around that into a sort of a tool to use. That's how rich rich people rich people a lot of times that are wealthy that have gone through the process of learning to build wealth, look at look at money more as a tool. You know, they'll use money to make more money. Mm-hmm. Where people that are broke or are worried about where their next dollar is going to come from, the rich person or the wealthy person is not really worried about that because they have learned that money is a tool, and if I invest it properly, I can make more money. Right. So then from the more money, they invest more and make more, invest more and make more. And so they use it more as a tool, <coughs> excuse me, than something of evil some or something. Would, some would say you have to have money to make money. You right? have to have money to make money. Yes and no, but you can do a task to make money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can work to make money. Right. Then use the money that you've generated from working to invest that in a business of your own or some other type of investment and, and make money. So right. so when you we get, without jumping into the whole money making thing, one of the first things to do is to pay yourself. Okay. Okay, meaning if you make a hundred dollars, a certain percentage of that hundred dollars should be kept for yourself to pay yourself first. Okay. Okay. Then out of what's left you pay everything else. But you always want to keep some of that as your own money to, for, so for investing. Okay, so I can invest in something bigger than what I have, you know, and more than what I have. And, uh, and just take myself to maybe the next level and help change my mindset. Right. And so what are some of the things, you know, people worry about? I think people worry so, so much nowadays about kind of trivial stuff. Uh, what are some of the things that you hear people worrying about? Um, I guess it could take you right back to money. How are they going <laughs> to make their mortgage payment? How are they going to make their mortgage payment? You know, but what what good does it do to worry about those things? Not much, because it either it, it's either going to get paid or it's not going to get it's, paid. It's going to get paid, but but what is does this act of worrying? Is the act of worrying? You see, there's th- certain things that are negative in life. And worrying is one of those negative aspects. Okay. So what right. what can be gained by worrying about? It? Let's say that at the end of the week, you know, comes Sunday or Saturday or Friday, whatever you consider the end of the week, that your rent payment is due. Five hundred dollars. Okay. Okay, and you only have four hundred. Right. Okay. So you have to come up with a hundred more dollars and all week you worry about where are you going to get that hundred dollars? What does that act of worrying do to produce the hundred dollars it doesn't do anything it doesn't do anything so from the from what 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 we could go on to talk about you know is the law of attraction states that that what you focus on the most is what you will get the most right so it goes back now to our families and uh, and the other things that we've talked about is is our peer group uh, if we want to, if we want to have more, we need to we need to associate with people that have more. Gotcha. Okay. Now, if we want to worry more, then we just think about worrying more. Right. So the the law of attraction states that what if you think about, what do you dwell upon, what if you focus on, that's what you will receive more of. So stop focusing on it. So when we worry about that hundred dollars, that little hundred dollars that that we we need to make that rent. Okay, we just get more worry. Right. Okay, we get more worry, and we get more of what's negative. It's not going to solve the, the ultimate it's problem. It's not going to solve anyway. the ultimate problem, and it's not going to draw the positive to us. Okay. Okay, so we, we kind of need to retrain our brain and retrain the way we think into uh, thinking about something, hey, that's positive, okay, instead of, you know, something that has a negative overtone to it 
or anything like that. And a lot of times, you know, you need to become inspired, okay? A lot of, I mean, there's so many negative things in life. You know, you talk about kid problems. You talk about families, broken families, money issues, problems at work. And you think, man, it, you know, everywhere I go and everything that I do and everything that I see is negative. I mean, it's on the news. It's on the programs I watch on TV. So all this input's coming into your life, into your life, into your life, and all from a negative point, a negative overtone to it. And uh, people wonder, why Why is everything in my life so negative? Why is everything happening to me? And, and it goes back to what you're feeding yourself. Your mindset. Your mindset, right. but why, why do you have that mindset? You have that mindset because of the food you eat. You know, Jim Rohn once said this. Was it Jim Rohn? No, I think it was, uh, who was it? Who's that other? Uh, man, it just escaped me. I should have wrote it down here in my notes. Uh, Zig Ziglar. I was thinking about Zig Ziglar. He said, that, you know, the, the, that he was talking about cottage cheese. Have you ever ate cottage cheese? He says um, that... Cottage cheese is the most fattening food that there is. It's gross. It's gross, but he says it's the the most fattening food that there is. And he said he could almost, you know, prove this. He says because only fat people eat this stuff. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That only fat people eat it. Right. So it it must be fattening. So if if you feed yourself... If you're overweight and you're feeding yourself fat people food, what are you going to get? <laughs> okay, you're just going to, you're just going to keep, continue to gain weight, or you're not going to lose the weight. So if you want to lose weight, was, you have to you have to do something different, right? Was he being facetious? Yeah, he, he was just joking around. I was going to say, but 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 the moral of the story is what you feed yourself is going is going to uh, the result you get is a result of what you feed yourself. Right. Right. Okay, so if you're on a diet, you have to eat healthy food, either low carb, and you have to exercise, and you, you have can't to just eat cottage cheese. You can't eat, <laughs> just eat cottage cheese, but but you have to feed yourself the nutrients you need to get the outcome that you want. Right. Okay. Same with with worrying. Same with. In, all this other stuff that we talked about. So how do we do that? Well, we can do some inspiration stuff. You know, every morning we can listen to something inspirational. You know, and I looked up here one by Helen Keller. I don't know if you do you know who Helen Keller is, Tammy. Yeah. Who is Helen Keller? She um she was actually um the first deaf blind person to um, receive her bachelor's degree in art. Um, she was also um, a very well known American author and political activist. Okay, where was she? Where did she live at? Uh, do you know? She well, she's from. Um, let's see if I recall here. Um, from Alabama, actually, and they actually have a museum there in Alabama. In Alabama for the the Helen Keller uh, Museum. And that's, you know, that's where the movie The Miracle Worker. The came Miracle from, Worker. Her, the story of her I, life. Th- I think I've seen that. I think it's been a. Uh, you know, a day or two since I've seen that. Yeah, it's been a little while. A little while. (laughs) But one of the things that she wrote, she said, the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. What does that mean? The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. That would be on the line of emotion. Emotions. And on the line of feeling, on the line of vision, okay, all this stuff that, that, once again, all this stuff that you feed into your mind, that you see Mm -hmm. with the senses, that you smell, that you taste, that you hear, that you feel, all of this stuff is is inputs into your body that change your heart, that change your soul, that change your mindset, that change your mentality. Okay, all of this stuff feeds you, okay, and the stuff that feeds you is what comes back out of you. Okay, garbage in, garbage out, positive in, positive out. Friends, fill your life with motivation. Fill your life with inspiration. Fill your life with the good things of life, and out of you will produce the the good the things that you want, the prosperity that you dream of. Friends, I'm Dave. This is Tammy. Hey, this has been Dave and Tammy in the morning. Goodbye.